Good morning and welcome to St. Michael's Church for our service today. As COVID is closing in again and determines our movements, forces us to stay apart, we are glad to come together even in different times and places to worship. For God calls us and unites us in his love. So let us call each other to worship using words based on Psalm 99. The Lord is King and a lover of justice. Let the peoples tremble. The Lord is great in Zion and brings equity to all. He is exalted over all the peoples. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Let us pray. Ever loving God, we gather in praise and hope, your beloved children, you, our eternal Father and great King. We come seeking the wisdom to know your will for us and to live as you have instructed. Thank you for calling each one of us by name. Thank you for sustaining us in testing times and for rejoicing with us in good times. Thank you for all you have entrusted to us, homes, families and friends, work and pleasures. Lord, forgive where we were thoughtless of all your gifts. Forgive us where we refuse to share and care. Teach us how to use our blessings to bless others and the whole world around. Teach us to stand up to fear and hate and reject all evil. Teach us to be your church, a community of pilgrims, journeying together on the road towards the light of your glorious kingdom. In a world where rulers seek to divide rather than build consensus, we ask for the confidence to show your love to all people, the boldness to be unbounded by earthly prejudice, to spread your love, to profess our faith without fear of ridicule. Help us to bear witness to the call to be in the world while always seeking to bring your justice to it. All this we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All my hope on God is founded, all my trust he will renew. Safe through change and chance he guides me, only good and only true. God alone, he alone, calls my heart to be his own. God's great goodness lasts forever, deep his wisdom passing thought, splendor, light and life attend him, beauty springing out of naught, evermore, over in all, newborn wells rise and Do you remember a few years ago the partial eclipse of the sun? I was painting our garden gate when it grew darker, colder. It was quite spooky. It was a little overcast where we were, so there was no danger. But for weeks before, people were warned not to look straight into the sun. It can burn our eyes and hurt them terribly. Today, we hear part of a conversation Moses had with God. We're told they talked like friends, and God tells him also, don't look at my face. For like the sun, to see God would overwhelm and destroy. Listen to the story from Exodus. 
Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses, face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then he would return to camp. But his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favour in my sight. Now if I have found favour in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favour in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will go with me, do not carry us up from here, for how shall it be known that I have found favour in your sight? I and your people, unless you go with us, in this way we shall be distinct. I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favour in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the, the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by.
Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? He answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Once a granny drove her three-year-old granddaughter in her car. Nanny! She almost sang from the back of the car as they were travelling at rush hour together. What does God look like? Granny quickly glanced in the rear view mirror, trying to concentrate on the traffic, keeping her precious cargo safe and racked her brain for an answer. How do you answer this question in a way that would not close down the wonder, curiosity and imagination, but still satisfy a three-year-old's concrete way of thinking? That's a great question, Jessica, said her, the granny, playing for time. Children are masters at asking the pertinent question at times when we least expect it or want to deal with it. Often we will just ignore them or brush them off. Often they leave us stumped, unable to answer. So how do we answer this question when our children or grandchildren ask us about God? What does God look like? What is God like? Moses, the great mediator between God and Israel, wanted to know as well. The conversation we heard today happened after the incident with the golden calf. God is still fed up with the people of Israel and wants to stay at arm's length. Just send an angel to guide them rather than doing so himself. But Moses pushes God and begs him to be among them as before until he agrees, God agrees, and then Moses asks daringly for another favor. Show me your glory, I pray. We humans are just like that. Seeing is believing, we say, and to trust something or someone we cannot see is almost impossible for us. Strange and ironic that a virus, invisible to the naked eye, but real enough and effective in infecting each other, is making the world practice believing that some things are real, even if invisible. God grants Moses' wish and shows himself, but he protects him at the same time and only shows himself in a way that does not hurt Moses. Like a parent protects a child from cruel or violent images on the television or computers, or special glasses allow us to witness a solar eclipse. Moses is allowed to see God's back, but not his face. The Hebrew word used for back is actually not the normal word used for someone's backside. The word used describes not something spatial, but something to do with time. A better translation might be, you will see my afterwards. Many people have given up on church because of our need to know, to see, and trust in real things. Humans hate to believe blindly, and bitter experience has often led to this conclusion. But in stories and imagery, the Bible tries to teach us of real, invisible things, important to shape our actions and interactions. God revealed himself first to Moses in the burning bush as, I am who I am. 
This can also be translated as, I will be who I will be, or I was who I was. Time is no obstacle to God. God gave this as his name. God, we may say, is the source, sustainer, and goal of all there is, was, and shall be. No easy name here to always remind people that God is the other, always more complex and beyond our understanding and impossible to manipulate. In today's story, God says to Moses similarly, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. But God's love and mercy are greater than our ideas of perfection and might. And so God came among his creation in one like us, in Jesus. God showed himself most fully. But he also protected us, held his hand over us as with Moses by becoming human, a human being like us. Jesus was a brilliant man, able to evade the traps his enemies were setting him time and again, as in today's story. And what's more, Jesus still manages to challenge them to rethink the status quo. First, people try to get him on their side by flattering him. Then they ask a question with an impossible alternative. Should Jews pay taxes to the Romans or not? The the answer yes or no will offend one or the other party present. Nationalist Pharisees? or internationalist Herodians. What is Jesus to do? He asks for a coin, which of course has the image of the Roman emperor on it, and says, pay the emperor what belongs to the emperor, and pay God what belongs to God. Where does the challenge lie in this? Well, do you remember that in the creation story, we are told that God made us in his image? So, of course, we need to pay our uh, dues and support our government that way. But more importantly, we need to pay God what God is due. And that duty is also upon all, all in power and government. So in order to pay our dues to God, we need to be sure We know where we see God. Where do we see his glory, his presence, his afterwards? Where do we see justice being done? Who do we support in working for a just society in our name? What do we do to give God his due? Our answers will sometimes need big discussions and decisions, and sometimes ordinary small but faithful, trusting actions, as in this story. Once there was a young boy who was intent on meeting God. He knew it would be a long way to get to where God lived, so he packed a bag with some chocolate bars and tins of Coca-Cola and went on his journey. He walked for a good while and then arrived at a small park. There he saw an old woman sitting on a park bench and watching the pigeons looking for crumbs to eat. The little boy sat down beside the woman and opened his bag. He was about to take out a cola when he saw the hungry glance of the old woman. So he took a chocolate bar and gave it to the old lady. Thankfully, she took the sweet and smiled at him, and it was a lovely smile. The little boy wanted to see this smile again, and so he offered her also a cola. And she took the cola and smiled again, more brightly than before. The little boy was happy. The two of them sat on the park bench all afternoon, ate chocolate bars and drank Coca-Cola, but never said a word. When it grew dark, the little boy became tired and decided to return home. After a few steps, he stopped and turned around. He turned to the woman and gave her a hug. The old lady gave him her most beautiful smile. When the little boy arrived back home, his mother saw his joy on his face and asked, 
What have you done today that makes you look so happy? And the little boy answered, I had lunch with God, and she has a wonderful smile. The old lady also arrived back home where her son was waiting for her. He asked her as well why she was looking so happy, and she answered, I've had lunch with God, and he's much younger than I thought. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Gracious God, eternal provider, we give thanks for your constant love and rejoice in the promise of your kingdom. Today we offer ourselves and present to you all the gifts we've brought. Take them that they may be tokens of our dedication to your mission and help alleviate the needs of this world. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would like to speak to someone, to our treasurer, especially Moira Gray, about how to support the work of the church, please contact her on the email. Let us pray for ourselves and for others. Creator God, thank you for calling us by name and talking to us still through stories and words of the Bible. Thank you for showing us your afterwards, your holy will and love in the shining face of Moses and the loving life of Jesus. Thank you for drawing us to yourself to be your friends. We pray, Lord, for the strength to do your work in our communities. Our world continues to be ravaged by disease, war, famine, natural and human-made disasters. This year has been difficult and will remain to challenge us. So help us and all people to see the promise of your light and your glory that no matter what we have to face as individuals or as a people, 
we may know and trust your love and presence as constant and true. Lord, we pray that we, be, we, along with our leaders, will have the wisdom to pay attention to those who are in most need. We pray for all at the margins of society, those in need of a proper income, those needing a purpose in life, friendship and love, inclusion or a home. Grant us, Lord, the boldness to tear down the walls built to divide us and bring your righteous justice to all. We pray for all who are sick at this time, for those receiving treatment, waiting for operations and healing. We pray for all working so hard to curb the spread of COVID, for medical staff challenged to help those suffering from it. We, the Church, ask for your continued protection also, that we will use the resources you have given us to do what is necessary to spread the message of your Holy Word to a world that is in so much need of peace, hope and love. All this we ask in Jesus' name, to whom be all glory and honour with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Or oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God for every offender the true day release that moment from jesus a pardon receives praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our joy and our wonder when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, to Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. So go to love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Ich glaube, das ist Corona. Das ist Corona? Ja. Sicher? Ja. So, I think this was a blessing from God that I caught it. This was a blessing in disguise. I caught it. I heard about this drug. I said, let me take it. It was my suggestion. I said, let me take it. And it was incredible the way it worked. Incredible. <laughs>